my dear buddies welcome back to vikas rachmala motorcycle podcast with tarun yes bro so as you all know that tarun is a technician and he works on motorcycles on a everyday basis so he has got a very technical perspective about the new pulsar ns 400 400 it also has that z you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now uh i was invited by bajaj to their pune uh, chakan test track test track which is also the factory and also we went to lonawala riding the new ns400 in the mountains so uh, i had a decent level of uh, experience with okay. the motorcycle we spent couple of days there i also did proper top speed testing braking testing cornering testing on the test track yeah. which is like a race track no and you proper. can also check those videos in uh, bro's instagram profile thank you yeah. yes uh, the instagram and all my facebook stuff would be in the description yes. of this video so now today we are going to talk about i mean this cap also they only gave right nice cap bro thank you they gave it during the launch event yeah bro. so so now this discussion is going to be about simple one thing that is should you buy the pulsar ns400 or not yes bro so generally we take uh, kind of sides okay yes. so because i was invited to the event i want to take a side where i am going to talk not so good things okay you talk good things initially yeah bro. then we both will okay. mix and talk whatever we want yeah bro done. okay done so tarun you are supporting the ns400 yes bro tell me one thing why would you want to buy three points first is a pricing mm -hmm. excellent pricing bro mm -hmm. second the new engine it's not a new engine mm. uh, i'm saying like uh, why i'm giving the second point to the engine it's already there in the dominar mm. so it's a reliable engine so yeah. like lot of years like research and development they have improved the engine from soh hc to dohc from 3 spark plug to 1 spark plug lot of uh, years so i think engine is very good no need to worry about right. it normally any new motorcycle which comes to market people worried about the engine mm. new engine so uh, in this motorcycle ns you already know engine from the dominar so it's going to be like good combination like of uh, trusting bajaj correct on the product tried and tested engine yeah yeah you know? yeah so there's two points what tarun mentioned one is the pricing which i want to disagree but i cannot disagree because ek showroom 188 correct 85 85 yeah wow so 185 88 whatever both are excellent very very well priced to give a perspective when the duke 390 was launched yes bro way back in 2013 i think right i had the first gen duke 390 so uh, the price point was exactly the same yes bro and when the dominar was launched in 2017 2016 december to be very specific i launched the dominar in yes. hyderabad they yeah. invited me so uh, the price point was exactly the same exactly bro yeah bro. okay so now we are talking about a price point of a dominar 400 which was launched in 2016 december yes, the bro. world was completely different back then you know pre corona post corona world is completely different prices of almost everything, everything have gone up raised, bro. Yeah, bro. two three four five yeah, times exactly. on this planet still we are able to get a motorcycle which has a dominar engine yeah bro dual channel ABS. and that dominant engine is mm. derived from the ktm 390 right. so it's like good combination yeah. for the price what we are paying correct all cousins basically yeah, yeah, yeah and the third point bhp bro true we are getting more than the dominar right the first no. gen dominar yeah more than the first gen dominar correct first gen dominar was 36 37 uh, 35 close 35 correct so 40 bhp is like good mark for this true. 400 cc true yeah bro because r uh, i mean mt03 is also close to 43 for like 2 uh, 3 bhp difference so Hmm. completely different twin or single but like bhp it's good someone wants a performance motorcycle in that price with good engine good price absolutely absolutely so when it comes to the pricing i say absolute winner okay yeah bro 
again see let us understand one thing we work very hard to earn money correct exactly none of us are born to some king or queen or someone right so we work very hard to earn money and whenever there is possibility of saving money and still buy a quality product we should do it yeah correct so that way i agree to his first point excellent value for money next engine is yeah. reliable so like, when he's talking about the engine of the ns400 when he said new engine it means the ns has a new engine yeah, yeah. correct and very good point he mentioned new engine is not always a good thing because for an example a company launches a new engine some for an example some 500 cc engine, yeah bro which they have not tried and tested then we customers become the testers exactly bro uh, we we'll, we don't know what kind of fuel efficiency we will get we don't know what kind of wear and tear will happen overheating this that we don't know we have that doubt in aprilia <laughs> yeah, so so it's a like uh, second point is correct. like very clear bro body we already know correct like little changes engine we already know correct so trusting so tried and tested engine so that way yeah uh, i have to agree to the second point also ah third point power output yeah correct you it's know not like some they are just putting 500 cc producing 20 bhp something <laughs> actually they are like that harley yeah harley <laughs> and uh, like typical uh, air cooled royal enfields and all like yeah yeah of course i will love royal enfields we own a you know interceptor 650 but you know there is fun criticizing sometimes especially when you own something and you still criticize it it's fun <laughs> so anyhow so what he is saying is that it is got good power good and power. i agree to that watch this video right now of me testing the top speed of this motorcycle the ns400 on the chakan test track which is like a race track watch it now now straight go straight let's test the top speed here i'm not looking down I think I almost did 160. I could have kept going, but this is my second lap, so I want to warm up, understand the track better. So what you have seen in the video is she is accelerating considerably well, quick, fast till 155. Yeah, that is fast enough. Like you know, honestly. practically on any of our highways you will not be able to consistently do speeds over 150, 150 no matter which mode cycle you have yeah. you have 1000 cc you have busa you have anything you'll not be able to do those speeds exactly. so if you are able to do 140 to 150 comfortably this motorcycle is very good yeah. correct people might say ns200 also will do 150 this also do 100 it's all about quick how quick the motorcycle is correct so we need quickest in the how fast it gets yeah, there yeah, no that is more important you know so definitely that makes difference in uh, 400 correct yeah so the ns200 yes it does 150 as a matter of yeah. fact i was surprised one day i was riding my yamaha r1 uh, i think this was about 6 7 years ago and uh, one guy waved at me he was riding uh, the ns200 and he signaled like this shall i join you uh -huh. i said come join so we were riding on the kompali highway i was riding at 150 fully tuck down on the r1 yeah, and this dude was on my left side bro he was uh, riding nicely upright he was riding on the ns 200 so ns 200 is an amazing yeah, motorcycle amazing. always loved the motorcycle but it will take a much longer time to get to 150 exactly whereas the ns 400 will reach in probably half the time yeah right Uh, so I believe zero to hundred is six point five seconds. Yeah, yeah, which is good. So now uh, uh, three points is clearly mentioned. Now I give you two points. What I don't like, Multiple. but these are not deal breakers. Okay, okay. okay. One is the <laughs> speedometer display console. 
Yeah. It looks like one of those uh, old video game consoles we used to get exactly. you know, 25 years ago. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love those video game consoles, but today in 2024, I don't like this display console, especially when the motorcycle is turned off. You see a small box kind of a thing that, you know, yeah, <laughs> square like, box yeah. or something, right? It looks really weird, but it's not a deal breaker because it doesn't affect the performance of the motorcycle mm, again okay. okay. because see i i like uh analog stuff you know i mean if given a chance i will say give me a uh tachometer which is manual like previous ns yeah, yeah. tachometer manual because when you open throttle it should go up like this boom mm. boom oh, man, that doesn't make sound like that but still saying you should go up you know and uh speedo can be digital yeah but... that's okay so but Times have changed. We don't get uh, manual tachometer, yeah. which is very sad. But okay, so this is not a deal breaker. Okay. Now next thing. Now this is something many people might like, but I personally do not like the color schemes of the NS series. I mean, I find them to be too rushed, mm. too what to say, much in a hurry. It's a hurried color scheme. I mean, too many colors, too many yeah. designs. Probably that's again, it's a personal taste. Right. Yeah, I like yeah. one color and like, you know, like for an example, how the Yamaha trademark mm. superbike colors are like, you know, blue and white or yeah, something. something like that. You know, it, it has to be more classy. Every bike puts out some color in their audience, like customers. Like right. if blue is like for Yamaha. Trademark color. Yeah, trademark color. For Bajaj, like every other day new color yeah but again it is something uh, it's not a deal breaker for sure yeah. but it is a very personal thing because again the ns series is focused towards very young people mm. like if today sid my son was 18 years old yes. then i would buy the ns i mean i don't want him to start with a 400 i would want him to start with a 150 or a 200 yeah. okay but saying if given an option, I would buy the NS400. So, for a youngster, they might like that complicated color scheme, you know, yeah, rushed yeah. color scheme. They might like. They might like. So, it's a very personal thing. Next, what, what, uh, it's very tough to find another point where, I think during the conversation, I'll find it. Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> and one more thing, bro. Yeah. I just want to share with Bajaj. Yeah. Don't put white wheels. There ah. are white alloy wheels on the motorcycles. Uh, even it's an option, is it? No, like every, like maybe like yearly once or some other time they launch a white alloys with a uh, NS200. Like mm. uh, white alloys with... Edition, new yeah, some edition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. White is not a good color. For alloys. Yeah, and um, for mainly for our roads. Correct, maintenance also a headache, yeah, no? Headache, bro. You have to clean it every day. Even, even if it's a blue or orange, it's big headache. Just imagine with the white. Even if you don't oh, leave whoever your face. deciding <laughs> you the point of keeping the white alloys. Right. I think white alloys you can have on a motorcycle which you don't use every day. Yeah. You know, it's a weekend motorcycle. You take it out on a dry day, mm. bring it back. That's you know, it's like having white alloys means even if you don't clean your face, you'll have to clean the alloys. Yeah. <laughs> Got your point. Uh, I mean, see if it's an option. Then, yeah, mm. some people might buy. Uh, mm. It's not like an option, bro. They mm. will only provide NS. Some period of time, it happened with NS200, oh. only comes with white. White mm. alloy wheels. Even they sold with 220, 180, 150, something like that. All with white alloy wheels. Right. Right. Okay. Now, uh, hopefully, bro, they don't do with this NS400. Got it? No white wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So now, okay, let's get to technical matters. Yeah, now, right. Tarun uh, has figured out a few technical things yes. which he's not so happy about, but again, they are not deal breakers. Yeah, exactly. First, you talk about the braking, the calipers. Calipers, people think these are new calipers from Bajaj, uh, Gramaika, but uh, it's actually like same, like the actual performance of a Bibri and Gramaika brakes are same, bro. Mm -hmm. But the point is, rear it's okay, all good. Front uh, in on Dominar 400, 
it comes with radial mount caliper uh, just like other uh, aprilia rs447 duke 390 or whatever like uh, this performance motorcycles but ns they gave it uh, the same caliper as the ns200 which is axle mount caliper okay so on an axle mount caliper particularly on this ns400z uh, it has only two pistons so on a domino 400 or like any other uh, 300 cc ktm or like aprilia they have like four piston calipers i would say uh, uh, by putting 40 bhp on a motorcycle uh, good brakes much needed bro correct so if you have four piston caliper at the front then it's going to be hmm. very uh, good yeah for the rider so what is saying that what he is saying is that uh, the front caliper for the front brake yeah bro has pistons only on the one side yeah bro. correct yeah, other bro. side is only basically the brake, the pad. brake pad yeah so pressure comes only from one side exactly bro. and other side is by default kind of squeezing yeah, it yeah exactly correct like you you push from this side it is also pushing from this side exactly correct yeah bro. so i completely agree that if pistons are only on one side it's almost uh, 70% braking only you know compared to what it would be if we had pistons on both sides exactly bro yeah it's like holding something you give your hand it's like holding his hand with both both sides you know yeah bro. full pressure or if uh, uh, there's only pressure from one side yeah but other side there's no pressure got it exactly so uh, i agree to that and the point mm. is bro like they put the the chunky usd forks uh, on mm. ns200 they put 37 mm like uh, little thin forks mm. but on a 400 they did uh, exactly the same size as the dominar mm. so if they are keeping for ns200 recently they have launched with usd forks yeah so for ns200 it's okay to have the axle mount caliper the braking is going to be okay 300 mm plate and all these things mm. but uh, on this thing they should have kept the Four piston. Four piston. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So and you're happy with the front forks? Yeah, forks are very good. Yeah. Good. Option. So you're happy at with least the they haven't uh, gave the normal conventional forks at 400 cc. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. So he's not happy with the uh, caliper, but he's happy with the forks. Yeah. Uh, with the front shock absorbers. So same with me. Yeah. Okay. But again, price point. You know, mm. we don't know how much would be the price difference between a four piston. Front caliper and a two piston front caliper. Even if, for an example, if it's two thousand rupees, for an example, yeah. extra for a four piston, then in then it will be passed on to the customers because you'll again on that two thousand rupees you'll pay GST, yeah. LST, PST, everything, right? Yeah, so, so again, road tax also will be calculated on that price. Yeah, you know, insurance also. So, exactly. saying you know there is uh, a reason why they have. Put two pistons. Yeah, pricing. Correct. Yeah, but the braking is fine. At See, they, they should have hmm. got with some other like one more variant. Yeah, they can do it because like it's not like manufacturing. It's not a big effort, bro. Because already uh, for Domino they're making radial mount calipers, everything. So like just an option. Correct. Like a performance edition of uh, yeah. the NS400, where uh, they can. Someone can order, yeah. pay another 30, 40, 50,000 extra and get all of those. Not things. like TVS creating a website, choose whatever. Just uh, just another version, this is what you get. Got so, it. Something like that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Agree. But the braking is fine. Yeah. Breaking. It got 320 mm Correct. a plate. See, in the end, she is not a race motorcycle. Let us be absolutely yeah. clear about that. Okay. So, do not expect the kind of braking that you used to get from the Dukes and the RCs. Yeah. But she is there. She is at least seventy percent. It's good on Libra. Yeah, I am not saying it's completely bad. It's good, cut. but very I good. Guess you rider, you yes. want like little bit right. more. But very good point. Yeah. Now another nice thing you pointed out on that photograph. We'll put yeah, it now. Bro. Okay, we'll put uh, these photos. Yeah. Whatever we were talking on about on the screen, you can see it right now. And another excellent thing Tarun pointed out, which I absolutely love, is that the front disc rotor is not. Installed onto the hub of the wheel. Exactly, bro. Normally, any motorcycle you see, uh, the bolts actually connect to the hub, the middle part of the alloy. Hmm. On this motorcycle, it actually attached to the uh, like spoke of the alloy, nice. which is the same thing uh, on a new generation Dukes also. Looks uh, very nice. Yeah, also. new. Looks yeah, very and nice. probably reduces some weight and all that. A little weight. weight yeah. Weight. Good. Good. Very nice. 
and uh, so they are not just okay, keeping yeah. the same mm-hmm. alloy. Mm. <laughs> so a little effort they kept it there. I mean, so, it's a nice engineering uh, matter, and also yeah, it looks very nice. Exactly, correct. And heat dissipation is also is going to be good on this compared to like full rotor and all. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Heat dissipation of the disc yeah, you're disc, talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Correct. And that one, what is the next thing that you like? Like, I already spoke about it. <laughs> well. So, few things I want to share, which are not, but in particular, but like uh, these are things I didn't like in the motorcycle. Uh, first, first main thing is a swing arm, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. They just gave the box swing arm. Mm-hmm. At least they should have put the aluminum swing arm. Because like mm. from NS200, someone wants to upgrade to a 400. Mm. Not only engine, only the engine is like more like 90 percent different than the motorcycle, right? Yeah. So at least they should have given the aluminum swing arm. Mm. So got it. So he see he works on motorcycles personally. So he is not happy with the box swing arm. See what is swing arm? You will see right now uh, yeah. on your screen. So whenever you have to take out the wheel whenever you have to work on a sprocket whenever you have to work on many things in the rear the swing arm will be worked on like yeah, you know you'll exactly. put bolts in yeah. take it out and all of that so if the swing arm is a box one yes there is advantage box means it's hollow from inside yeah, exactly, right exactly so that way it's lightweight it's cheaper to manufacture but he's saying the more times you put bolts in take it out tighten it it might structurally yeah exactly bro become weaker exactly right? and yeah. uh, so if you have aluminum swing arm uh, the point where the axle sits it's going to be very solid yeah. and actually you'll feel that feedback uh, when you're riding it you'll gi- it will give some kind of little more confidence while riding the motorcycle not for everyone particularly those who ride it yeah. very aggressively and like on the track and all right. so aluminum swing arm is better bro absolutely i agree see anything where if it's hollow I mean, it doesn't yeah. actually give great confidence, but yeah, I mean, again, price point, exactly. right? See, uh, when we were there in Lonavala, we were having a discussion with the main official of the judge. He told us one thing. I'm sure you guys will find 100 uh, things which can be improved. But for us to give at this price point, okay, we don't want to give a cheap product. He mentioned mm. that. We don't want to give a cheap product. We want to give a quality product. Okay. At this price point, so we have eliminated anything which is not necessary. I got got their point, but yeah, yeah. got it. So now ah, I found one thing that I do not like. So that bro. So see, people are obsessed with electronics. I am mm. exactly opposite. Whereas I am a tech guy. Yeah, bro. okay. I am into the IT industry. I am into IoT, this, that, all of that, but I I am not a fan of fly-by-wire throttle, that the ride-by-wire throttle. throttle. Okay. So now let us give a quick explanation of what is that throttle. So generally, if this is the accelerator, okay, with the right hand you twist it, right? Exactly. Then what happens? Motorcycle goes forward. (laughs) (laughs) So basically, you do like this, right? Then generally. There is a physical cable yeah. which gets pulled up okay, and it goes and it there is a butterfly valve or different kinds. Yeah. Okay, It sends more air inside the combustion chamber. Exactly. It is known as throttle body. Okay, So that way you give input to the engine saying that go faster, you know, act, increase the RPM. Exactly. Okay. So it is a physical cable. So here, in fly-by-wire throttle, when you twist, you are actually twisting a sensor. Yeah, exactly. Bro. Okay. So there is nothing in between. Hey, by it's as simple as. Okay. Let me get. Where are you going, bro? Okay. It is like. Good example. Wireless mouse. And a cable mouse. So in wireless mouse, even even if it's a nice high-end one like this Lenovo one, you have to shake it first. It, then it wakes up. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So 
there is a lag. There will be a lag. So when you open throttle, there be a microsecond lag, lag before when you twist. Your hand movement has to send a signal to the sensor. Sensor has to send a signal through a cable wire to a servo motor. Servo, servo motor is a motor which opens the, the throttle body. body. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, there are multiple links here. So, there will be a small delay. But fortunately, here in, I mean, while riding this motorcycle, the NS200, I did not find any. NS400. I said what? 200. 200, I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> NS400, I did not find any uh, significant delay. It was not something which was a concern at all. But in many other motorcycles which have a ride by wire, there was significant delay, I was not happy. Exactly. So it is not a deal breaker. But for me personally, I don't like ride by wire. Okay. Exactly. But here, ride by wire is important because it has got different riding modes. Hmm. Okay. I think due to the ride by wire only, Correct. they can keep the riding Correct. mode. Like for an example, if they have given a mode, it has rain mode, right? Uh, rain yeah. mode. Rain mode, sport Road mode, and sport something like that. Wait, our dude is sitting behind Nitin. Yeah. What three modes it has? Rain, ride, sport, off road. He was anyways riding only in sport, even <laughs> during rain. But <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> off road, rain, and uh, uh, sport. Riding mode, sport mode, off road mode, and rain mode. Four. Four modes. Yeah. Okay. So for an example, when there is rain mode, okay, if you have physical cable. How will you restrict the throttle input? Hmm. Correct? Nothing, yeah. If you open throttle, physically the throttle cable will get pulled and the throttle body will open, more air will go inside, more fuel will go inside and the engine will respond. But when you have sensor. a sensor and you changed the setting to rain mode and uh, even in rain I want to, I suddenly see Another motorcycle, motorcycle going past me and I get Josh and I want to overtake him. I open throttle. But even if I open full throttle, the sensor will not open the throttle body full. Yeah, because of the mode. Because of the mode. Okay. Yeah, bro. So when you have modes, you need fly by wire. Exactly. But see, all these things are good on a very, very powerful motorcycle. Very powerful. Like you have 150, 180, 200 yeah, exactly. BHP under your butt. Then, then we can actually feel the difference. Because in rain, gravel and sand, sometimes when an inexperienced rider, like if Sid is learning to ride a 1000 cc in rain, then uh, rain mode is good. Exactly. Because it has 100, 120 nm torque, like a 1000 cc. Yeah, okay. Right. So instead of being very careful with the throttle, he can, like a new rider, can be a little relaxed yeah. even if they open too much throttle like on many of the super bikes if it is 180 200 bhp rain mode will reduce 50 60 bhp exactly. of input yeah but here we have only 40 bhp now exactly. <laughs> don't feel 40 is not less but i'm saying okay so here if you have basic level of common sense experience also you don't need a rain mode exactly yeah and it also creates a little bit con confusion well, no, because this is the first time from Bajaj ride by wire. Uh, what I would say, like, if something related to ride by wire issue, because I have a garage, so, so like, I didn't tell him. Yeah. I got it. I got it, bro. <laughs> so now, recently, what happened? One of uh, the customers. Yeah, bro. I can tell. No, that's true. Yeah, you can. You can yeah. tell. So his uh, KTM, right? Ah, uh, KTM 390. 390. Which one, Duke or the RC? Duke 390. It has ride by wire. Yeah. Okay. Bro. So, so the sensor. We don't know the sensor on the top or the sensor which is the. I at mean, the, at the, the top only. Bro. Top only. Yeah. Okay. It malfunctioned. So he's opening full throttle. The RPM is not rising. It, it it is being in the idle all the time. Staying at idle. Yeah. And that part is not available in the showroom. So like he wants. Tell this. No, he rode yeah. twenty kilometers in 20, first gear at idle. <laughs> at, he put it in the first gear and he rode it from there to here. So, if your cable breaks, see cables can also break. Yeah. You simply replace the cable. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. So, even if you don't get the same cable, sometimes you can put some other cable, adjust it, do yeah, alteration. Do right? it. So, technology is good, but when it doesn't work, 
it doesn't work it doesn't work. <laughs> so so that is my concern see like for an example planes hmm. have been uh, fly by wire see yeah. technology came from there yeah exactly okay why have they been fly by wire you flying fighter jets the first came in fighter jets okay so for fighter pilots they have to focus more on where to shoot the missiles yeah. and you know That's bombs and all that so they have to focus less on flying like oh putting more effort just yeah. millimeter no yeah okay no. so it is already pre programmed into the computer even if that guy pulls up this way goes here there you know the input goes through a computer it calculates okay at this uh, you know kind of altitude here there is it auto rudder is it this that so then it will give the input that is required to keep the plane safe so he can focus on shooting the enemy yeah bro okay those fly by wire throttles and inputs don't generally malfunction they also malfunction but they don't generally malfunction because they are very 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 high quality exactly okay plus in planes everything they are two units exactly everything it is called redundancy factor the fuel pump there will be two fuel pumps exactly. from every tank yeah. okay if there is a servo motor there will be two servo motors okay and very often there are electronics and there is a cable line also uh, yeah bro okay in in few of the aeroplanes so that is aeroplanes fine forget about that now even in 1000 cc or high end motorcycles which cost a lot of money they also sometimes malfunction but at least the servo which is there the sensor which is there it costs a few hundred dollars exactly probably 20 30 000 rupees only that sensor but here the motorcycle itself is 1 lakh 88 000 so the quality of the sensor will of course be not compromised but economical due to our weather also like these electronics won't work good not everyone put like in the shade or something it's a bike right now bro like, everyone rides in a different way and a lot of issues. excellent point yeah. I'll, i'll complete this excellent point see not everyone is fortunate enough to have a parking yeah. which is secured secured parking is shade uh, no rain no sunlight yeah. where some you know idiotic kids won't sit on your motorcycle and <laughs> uncle bike uncle bike yeah. they won't do all yeah. that okay so uh, but if you are living in a big you know, apartment society where you have to park your motorcycle unattended, unattended somewhere it's raining water will go in yeah okay that, that is a problem bro sensors okay. mm-hmm. and uh, plus your watchman will spray you know that uh, borewell water, water yeah. hard water it will go the uh, dry water will dry and that uh, salt and sediments and everything will be there exactly okay and uh, get jammed in between the server servo motor and the sensor okay and next uh, 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 sunlight like our sunlight is harsh yeah it's harsh. very harsh so it's called weathering factor because of weathering factor gone yeah it's gone bro even though they put a good quality one We are like that. Fighter jet one will also be gone, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fighter jet, fly by wire also in our weather will be gone. It will be gone. Yeah. So my point is, bro, like instead of keeping ride by wire, they should have gone with aluminum swing. I'll come to aluminum swing arm only all the time. Excellent point. Yeah, Excellent bro, because, point. Because uh, it it costs a lot of money also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a few to, thousand rupees yeah, for sure. If, if like, they might say like it's a less maintenance. You don't have a physical cable. but if something goes wrong with a ride by wire we probably should put 67k something like that yeah. the whole system yeah absolutely okay and imagine if you're in ladakh or somewhere <laughs> <laughs> on idle 5 hmm? months 6 months if you're coming down the mountain it's fine yeah. you're going up in the mountain it don't go also <laughs> <laughs> malfunction <laughs> yeah see people are obsessed with uh, unnecessary features yeah. see what can bajaj also do right Bajaj, uh, the gentleman who was there, talking to us, the official, very high-end official, he is. Uh, he clearly mentioned that Bajaj actually does not promote unnecessary features. Mm-hmm. He mentioned that we didn't want to bring in that music player, you know, like skip music yeah. function in the console because it's not safe here. Yeah? You should not have music controls in the this thing, and plus they did not want. Uh, turn by turn navigation yeah. oh, nonsense you know that all should not be there if you want gps put a gps module yeah. up there yeah you know but today people are obsessed you know and they want to buy iphone they want to buy this this specification so they think even motorcycle should have all unnecessary mm. crap technology 
okay so because people want that manufacturers are forced to give that right exactly. and because of that because they are giving that off road but like tell me one thing bro is this off road uh, motorcycle like why the heck would someone want off road motorcycle what you'll go jumping you'll do that level bro this this is a motorcycle where you go to office where you take your girlfriend out this looks like uh, people forcing the companies to do hey, people are, the official told it to us even on a scooter there is a mode bro rain mode off road mode turbo Not turbo. Not turbo. At least put turbo. That yeah. makes more sense. It's mechanical. Yeah. So, so, so basically, okay. See, see, what, what is uh, off-road here? Yeah? Nonsense. Nothing. This is not an off-road motorcycle. You'll break your alloys. You'll break, damage your suspension if you go off-road on this. Yeah. Suddenly you're going. The road is bad. It's okay. Next rain. Forty horsepower and uh, what is the torque? Nitin. Thirty-five. What is the torque? Thirty-five, I guess. <laughs> Something whatever. 30, 30, 30. Okay, so if you can't handle some thirty or newton meters of torque with your throttle management, then what? Okay, so uh, next is uh, you know uh, sport mode. Okay, fine. You know, I mean, I will ride on sport mode only all the time. All the time, most of them. Yeah. So uh, plus this motorcycle is where. You go to office weekend. You go out on breakfast ride. You take your girlfriend out, uh, and uh, you go on tour once in two three months, four months. Simple, yeah, straightforward. So good. They should have given bro aluminium swing arm. <laughs> I won't leave it. <laughs> Let's talk to Mr. Rajiv Bajaj immediately. You know, and uh, yeah, bro. Watch you. You take the swing arm from our R one and put it. No? On if you buy the KTM industry. ones uh, work fine. <laughs> KTM ones is good. And one more thing, bro. Alloy wheels mm-hmm. look similar, like same as uh, NS two hundred. Okay, I did not focus on that. And uh, alloy is also okay, bro. But uh, tire sizing, they should have kept the one fifty at the back. Very good point. That official who was there, Lona Vala, during the launch, he mentioned that see, we would want to give. But again, there's a big price difference. Plus, plus, technically, for cornering, 140 is better. Yeah, but mm. see, white tire. Okay, you need way more skill to actually take a tighter corner. Exactly. 140, yeah. you can lean her better into the corners. But again, but in 150, all, the tires are good, bro. 150 section, like mm. in the market, like if you want to upgrade the tires uh, and all. That. Yeah, correct. I mean, in the future, we can upgrade. Yeah. No. Hmm? I want to put 180, bro. <laughs> Some people in Duke, it... on Duke 390, you know, in 2014 they put 180. 180. 180 they put. Nothing. Your chain will get effed. Your <laughs> engine will get stressed. Uh, but you know, very little uh, gap with singam. Correct. Something correct, might correct. get stuck. So anyhow, uh, 150. I think you can upgrade, no, on this yeah. in the future. Ah, uh, we can. Upgrade. But I don't recommend. As a matter of fact, on my Duke 390, you remember, I put 140. Mm, back then, yeah. Yeah, I don't know which tire that was. Yeah, some MRF tire, right? I I put one forty. Anyhow, so and they mentioned a very nice thing: the handle bar. Which uh, was, this is not a clip-on, right? Yeah, it is not a clip-on. Okay, see again. Why do we, we don't want, want clip-on, bro? We don't want on a naked bike. Mm, <laughs> why do we want ride? Pulsar will say like, uh, like sit like a man, right? Yeah. See, super bike, sport bike is different. Yeah. This is a motorcycle you want to be comfortable. Okay. Next. Uh, he mentioned they put a lot of effort into the manufacturing of the handlebar. Mm-hmm. It is not simply molded, or okay. it is not simply bent. Generally, what happens? A straight bar, they put pressure on sides and bend mm-hmm. it, and they make a handlebar. Or it is molded sometimes. But here they use something called nithen. What is that? Hydro. Hydro. Yes. Hydro shape. Uh, hydro something, right? Yeah. So basically. Uh, why I keep saying Nitin Nitin because we were at the launch together and uh, he was focused and uh, I was feeling sleepy, so <laughs> I forgot anything. So they used technology where they sent in high pressure water, mm-hmm. very high pressure to shape the handlebar, so that shapes it in a way where there are no kinks. The bend is very smooth without. Okay. Okay. Compromising the structural, uh, you know, strength and uh, ability of the handlebar, so it's going to last for a much longer time, and it looks nice, nice dark color. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. 
wow and uh, they said they don't want to add all this unwanted stuff that right. other bikes are giving right so like uh, we don't need those adjustable levers also i completely agree completely agree but it helped me mm -hmm. when i was getting out of the track i actually have a video i'll see if i can find it i'll play it i was wearing gloves of course okay. but i was wearing uh, different kind of gloves and when you whenever you wear gloves you have to kind of set uh, how far do you want the lever to be okay, the adjustment okay, okay. so it really helped it really helped so yeah nitin hydro foam hydro foam 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 okay thanks man so yeah so it helped i mean it's not necessary but it is one feature which i would want mm hmm Okay. Take off every electronic. Okay, okay. Throw it out. But I want adjustable levers. Okay, bro. See, aftermarket adjustable levers is a big issue. Yeah, if you want to buy quality ones, they are very expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. for super bikes, they are three hundred dollars, two fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay, set. So, if you buy cheap ones, these levers are expensive, bro. These ones on NS four hundred, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing you're getting stock. Because if you have to buy aftermarket, like for example, I buy the NS400, and mm. I want aftermarket. Then if I buy high end, they're very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand. Cheap ones are like suicidal, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was a oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> breaks. Imagine yeah. I'm riding hard. This is the lever, and I pull like this, and breaks. Yeah, bro. You know, we don't want that. So either we put high end, or we put the use the stock. And if you have stock as adjustable, then it's awesome, right? Good only, bro. But pricing is too much different. Bro. Normal one like two hundred, two fifty something. It will. Oh, you're saying in case we fall and it breaks. First thing, those are the only things it will affect on the motorcycle. This is a lot of bikes. But tell me, if it breaks, can't we put normal? No. Will normal? Ah, we, can, we can. We can give. We can give. Oh well. See, we if you don't have money, okay. Like uh, adjustable. His concern is that adjustable levers. Will cost probably thousand, two thousand, something you were saying, right? Two thousand five hundred plus. Correct. So if Vikas acts very smart, he wants to show off in front of girls. He does a wheelie and he falls <laughs> and breaks the lever. And I'll go to Tarun. Tarun bro, replace the lever. And he'll bring me a bill of three thousand, four thousand because he also had to buy the part yeah. for two, three thousand. But I'm saying at that time, if I don't have the money. I'll say put non-adjustable lever. No, what is the problem? We can keep it. Yeah. Hmm. Old one, like we can give it directly. Correct. Okay, bro. My personal favorite color is white. Yeah, white. Right. You know? Not with the white alloys, no. You like white alloys? No, no, no. You don't like? No. So I like. I want with white alloys. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cool. Cool. So I think we have covered many, many. Um, fuel efficiency. See, let's be practical. It's almost 400 cc. So what my Dominar is giving the same miles. When I used to ride my Duke 390, even the RC 390, when I ride now, I'll never get more than 20, because yeah. that's the way I ride them. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I like performance. Not more than 20. Even if the motorcycle doesn't have performance, I'll. I would say like, bro, 20 to. 24 in between correct very on that riding high waist 24 25 yeah. okay i mean if sometimes you are doing a very economical budget trip sixth gear at 80 kilometers an hour It probably you do. can get 26 yeah. 27 yeah so so previous uh, previous on ns200 uh, the tire agger used to be mounted on the right side of the swing arm uh, when you put it on the side stand it doesn't look that good So now it's it's on the opposite side on the left side. Mm. So now physically, when you look the motorcycle, it's 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 looking good. And also Stop. one more another point I forgot to add. Mm. It's not a big thing, but small thing that I noticed mm. uh, on Dominar or any other. Now normally all the manufacturers just taking off all these things, keeping mm. uh, disc is on the right side. Now like yeah. both the discs on the one side only yeah. uh, on a Dominar it. It it used to be on the left side. Which one? The the continuous one. Okay. Hmm. So it's better to have. No, it is too deep. I'm going, but yeah, on the yeah. left side, uh, or the front one, right side at the back, okay. it's going to be like very, very little little things. This is a physics thing. Yeah. 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 If you start breaking, you know, it's kind of a yeah. uh, 
thing where it keeps the motorcycle in center it, it's a very deep thing yeah got it got it the funny thing with uh, i want to uh, tell small moment bro mm. uh, even people ask the ktm when they're launching the new duke 390 mm. why you take it uh, from the left side and put it on the right side is so, mm. like if you see it on the right like normally people would it in the side side right aesthetically like it's looking good that's why we kept it on the right side this time got got it hmm So I think we are done with almost all the points. Yeah, bro. If there are any more points, please put it in the comment section. We'll make one more one-hour podcast. Yeah, bro. So any doubts, comments on this video. Yeah. The next video is also coming very soon. Absolutely. So so uh, let's last thing talk about the looks. Yeah. Okay. See, I don't know what people think about the front headlight, but I like that. It it, yeah, it looks like kind it. of from a science fiction kind yeah. of a film. Uh, but see. people of my age might not like who are in their late 30s but young people are going to like it and uh, uh i like it too it's good bro actually people will get mm. used to it yeah. people eventually they like it yeah it's good illumination i did not test that is how is the headlight focusing on the road and all of that because we did not ride in the night yeah but hopefully soon when bajaj sends the motorcycle to me again for testing we'll ride it in the night yeah. i only like to ride in the night yeah <laughs> <laughs> with no traffic and all that so that's it uh, yeah, anything bro. more to say nothing bro nitin any more points that's it guys for this podcast and do comment like share and as you know taron has his own workshop you know the name is motor god garage motor god garage here in hyderabad alwal area okay his phone number would be right now on the screen Uh, and you can connect to both of us on instagram exactly. facebook twitter twitter jitter anything <laughs> <laughs> basically you are there everywhere uh, and instagram yeah uh, most important uh, so that's it yeah bro that's it you can connect with me on linkedin also so take care like subscribe share and we we'll see you guys in the next one and if you don't like something comment no scold us also no problem we love it okay yeah Bye bye